Hello everyone and welcome back to part 6 of my record collection series. After part 5, I thought I was done with the series for a while, but not even a month later, here we are with part 6. And if you don't want to miss any of these videos, uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you actually get notified when I upload new videos. After a couple weeks off, I'm going to be back, uh, hopefully regularly uploading. Alright, first up, we've got Fear Fun by Father John Misty. This was Father John Misty's first album as a solo artist, uh, not counting his Jay Tillman records because he doesn't really uh, think of those too highly. They are pretty good. He just kind of shits all over them. So as Father John Misty, this is his first album. From what I know, it was recorded while Fleet Foxes were touring Helplessness Blues. Father John Misty was, of course, the drummer. He wanted to release it, and they said, no, you can't release it unless you finish your tour dates. So he did, and then he was just miserable and carrying drugs everywhere, so that led to a big hiatus for the group. And uh, all this information I'm getting is from Robin Pecknold, the lead singer of Fleet Foxes. He did an AMA on uh, on Reddit. I'll put a link to that in the description, so you can fact check my accounts of the, of the event. Maybe I'm missing something, but Fear of Fun was written and recorded in that time. The album really sounds like uh like an early prototype for father john misty music where he talks a lot about psychedelics which makes sense because at the time there were a lot of psychedelics going on in his life and uh he was really hard using them using them all the time so you can really hear that especially in uh, i'm writing a novel which just really makes no sense but it's about like a psychedelic trip and uh, he wanted to write a novel and whatever and he cut his hair for the music video for nancy from now on which is a great song but I think this album is great, and it's a great starting point for Father John Misty. You see all these themes that come up later in his music, like Love, which is in basically all of his albums, but uh, especially I Love You, Honey Bear. ABC, The Lexicon of Love. I've never heard this album, but I won it uh, in a Facebook group I'm in for, for uh, records. They're doing giveaways every month in December, and I won. There will be a few more albums that will come up in this list from that giveaway, but it came up in the giveaway, so now I have it. Nick Drake, Pink Moon. So Pink Moon is one of my favorite albums of all time. I discovered it last year and uh, started listening to it. I love how personal it sounds. Like, I've never heard an album that actually sounds like I'm right there in the room with Nick Drake while he's recording, but that's what it sounds like on this record. The guitar sounds so beautiful. Very, You can tell he used very thick strings just by how it sounds. The songwriting is incredible, too. And it's only short. It, you know, there's... A, decent amount of tracks but some of the songs run a little short none of them run too long you end up getting this really short album but with a lot of tracks on it as well it's only about 30 minutes not even i don't think i think the run time's like 29 minutes or something but i love the album a lot and it's one of my all-time favorites and uh it's one of those folk classics like blue by Joni mitchell which i have in my collection and you can see in uh, a previous video gorillas song machine season one strange times so this album came out in the tail end of 2020, and it was one of the good things to come out of a garbage year. I love this record. I think it's the best Gorillaz album to date. I was never really into Gorillaz before this album. Of course, I knew the hits like Feel Good Inc. and On Melancholy Hill and Clint Eastwood, but I never really looked at them as a serious band especially because of the bad reception humans got. But I really, 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 really loved this album on first listen. I talk about it in my favorite albums of 2020 video, so if you want a more detailed description of why I like the album so much, you can go check that out. I'll put the I card up in the corner. But man, I think the features on here are incredible. You've got features from Elton John, Peter Hook, Robert Smith from The Cure. You've got Slow Tie on the Deluxe Edition. You get Gold Link and jpeg mafia which is awesome i don't have the deluxe edition on vinyl i only have the standard edition but i still think it's a great record you know and it, the features don't drown out gorillas they don't drown out damon albarn it's all very well balanced and i think the features add a lot to this album they really do they really add a lot of character and they they give it a whole cartoony nature which is awesome the pressing is also really cool too it's pressed on like a beautiful vinyl green day nimrod so I've actually had this album before. Well, I had part of it, and let me explain. So the album is a double LP, but the D side is just blank. There's like an etching on it. Um, kind of like my copy of Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. 
there's not enough material to fill up a D side. So the A, B, and C sides are full, and then there's an etching on the D side, which actually looks pretty cool. And the vinyl itself is beautiful. But I bought it from a record store in Moncton, New Brunswick. And uh, I dropped it while I was in the store after I'd already paid for it. So when I got out to the car, I thought, fuck, I should really check this, you know? So I opened it and checked it. And uh, the first LP, I opened it and I thought, huh, it was the C side and the etching. And I was like, maybe they just switched them around in the packaging. You know, that can happen sometimes. And then I opened uh, the second sleeve. It's a gatefold. And in there was also the C side and the etching. So I got two of the same side of the album and I only got a third of the album. I didn't even get half of it because of the etching. Post Malone, Hollywood's Bleeding. My pressing of beer bongs and Bentleys is on a clear vinyl. And I'd always heard clear vinyl sounds worse. So I thought, okay, this doesn't sound great. And it doesn't. My pressing of beer bongs and Bentley sounds really bad. Um, but I thought, it's probably just the clear vinyl to, to blame, right? Well, no. Because when I played this album, Hollywood's Bleeding, it sounds awful. The vinyl is so thin. You don't need to have 180 gram vinyl to sound good. You just need to have something that doesn't sound like shit. And this sounds like pure concentrated shit. The album itself, I think, is really cool. The album itself is really cool, you know? It's got uh, a nice embossed cover. It's got some really cool inserts. The vinyl itself looks cool. Well, the color does, but then you listen to it and it just sounds cheap. It's really cheap. So I'm starting to think maybe the issue is just with Post Malone's records and not with the vinyl itself. War on Drugs, live drugs. I've never listened to the War on Drugs up until the tail end of last year. They played in Halifax a couple years ago for Halifax Jazz Festival, and I'd always heard of them. I'd seen them on the radio, on, on satellite radio, but never really listened. And I know they had this huge cult following. So if you remember from when I discussed my Fleet Foxes records, I was in the studio uh, for my radio show, and my co-host said, oh, you really like Father John Misty, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, I think that Father John Misty used to be the drummer for Fleet Foxes. So I thought, wow, you know, I had always heard of Fleet Foxes, so I decided to finally check them out. And now they're like my favorite band. I got a Fleet Foxes tattoo not long ago from the new album, Shore. In the t on the tail end of last year, in the tail end of 2020, I started getting into Kurt Vile. And the same friend told me, I think Kurt Vile used to be in War on Drugs. Uh, fast forward to the end of the year, it's December, I'm in the record store. A friend of mine in this record group chat I'm in told me, hey, I really liked uh, the new War on Drugs live album. I think it's awesome. So I bought it, threw it on the player. It sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. I loved it. I loved it. So uh, so I picked that up as well. Speaking of Kurt Vile, Kurt Vile, Waking on a Pretty Days. Only a couple days after I bought the War on Drugs album and I saw Waking on a Pretty Days and I thought, it's a great album. It's got some really good songs on it. Why don't I buy it? And uh, I bought it. And as an album, I never appreciated how great of an album listen it is. But it is, man. It's really good. It's really, really good front to back. Sit down, listen to an album, drink tea, get stoned, whatever you want to do. This is another album. I got uh, I got this in an auction, but it's uh, Sesame Street, Aren't You Glad You're You. And I only got this because I saw Sesame Disco. And I thought, well, fuck, I have to get Sesame Disco. Featuring Kermit the Frog of the Muppets. A crossover, wow. So both of those albums, they were like $10. I thought, why not? The guy ended up just sending me a bunch of albums along with those, like a bunch of kids records that I just gave to friends or just don't don't have in this video. I thought it was hilarious. $20 for two albums and then you end up getting a bunch more. Why not, you know? Tattoo You by the Rolling Stones. I was never a Rolling Stones guy. I'm not gonna lie. I just, I've never been much of a Stones guy, but uh, I like Tattoo You pretty good i'm more of a beatles guy and i know you don't really have to pick because their music's not that comparable but looking at british bands to make it big in the states from the 60s i think the beatles obviously did it better but i've just never really got into the stones you know so it's cool to have a stones record but i've just never personally went into the discography this album's big if you watched my last video the top 12 albums i want in 2020 this was on there, and I finally found it after searching since 2017, and that album, Nightmare Logic by Power Trip. Really glad to have finally found it. I've been searching for a long time, and I finally, 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 finally found it.
um, the day after my birthday, which was nice. I found it at Taz Records in Halifax. If you haven't heard it, I strongly recommend listening to it and just listen to Power Trip in general. They're a really great like throwback thrash metal band. They mix like elements of thrash and hardcore and punk all into their music. And it was only released in 2017. The Sunset Tree by the Mountain Goats. I love Mountain Goats. Sunset Tree is an incredible album. A lot of the songs are really, really, really great, you know. It's got upbeat songs like dance music in this year, although the themes are kind of dark. But then you look at songs like Song for Dennis Brown and Pale Green Things, and they're really sad. So it's my favorite Mountain Goats album. I love it, and uh, I had to pick it up. Swimming by Mac Miller. I'm a huge fan of Swimming, and uh, I love Mac Miller. You know, I liked Circles a lot when it first came out and uh, bought it on vinyl the first time, <laughs> for the first weekend it came out. Uh, and it's a great pressing, it's on clear vinyl, but it sounds really nice. I included it in one of my past videos uh, of my record collection. But swimming's great too, you know? I just felt if I had circles, I had to have swimming as well. Um, it was gifted to me, so I didn't actually buy it, but uh, to the person who gifted it to me, if you're watching, I appreciate it. Double Fantasy by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Double Fantasy's not really like a great album. It's good, but it's not not as complete as like Beatles records or even as Plastic Ono Band, their self-titled album. But I uh, I saw it for five dollars at a record store, and I thought, why not? I might as well get it. That same day at the record store, I bought Descendants. Cool to be you. Uh, I was never a huge Descendants fan, but when I started to get into my punk face uh, in the last half last yeah last half of last year of 2020 so uh, i got into this punk phase and they were one of the bands that crept up you know and i love milo goes to college so i didn't really know what to expect when i saw the uh cool to be you album at the record store but i thought i'll give it a chance i loved milo goes to college listened to it loved it so the reason i went into the record store that day was because i had an album that I ordered in because I loved it and it was a closed record store and they could order it so I said why not and I ordered Ultramano by Idols. Speaking of my punk phase, I am huge into Idols right now. A UK post-punk band, very blunt in their songwriting, very direct to the point. Some would say sloganeering, I wouldn't. I just think they're, uh, they're very direct with their songwriting not pulling any punches, very socially conscious too, addressing toxic masculinity and sexual harassment. I think they're a very progressive post-punk band in their messaging, but I think their instrumentals are awesome too. I think their production sounds really clean. I think Joe Talbot's voice is incredible. Joy is an Act of Resistance is my favorite Idols album. Um, I'm gonna try to find it as soon as I can. Um, all this, all these record purchases have made my wallet pretty light, but as soon as I can afford to get Joy as an Act of Resistance, I will. As of now, I have Ultramano, which came out last year. If you watch my top 10 albums of 2020, it ranks on there. I think it's great. Um, I won't go into too much detail because I already did in that video. And lastly, I got this today from Holland. Well, from Germany, but it is a Holland pressing of, oh, that's backwards. Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen, which I uh, I really started to fall in love with over break. You know, I listened to it before, uh, loved it, but I really started to fall in love with it uh, while I was home on Christmas break. So I found a copy on eBay for really cheap. It's Holland pressing coming from Germany. So I bought it and uh, it sounds awesome. I listened to it earlier. It sounds beautiful. I had to clean it a little bit because it was a little dirty, but what can you expect? It's old. So that's going to be it for this video. Like I said, a lot of used records, um, which, you know, as I noted in previous videos, I don't have many of. So it's nice to actually get your hands on some stuff that's been around for a while. Um, and I've got a mix of new stuff in there too. If you like the video, please leave a like, uh, leave a comment and tell me about your collection. What do you have? What do we have in common? What albums should I check out based on the albums I've already listened to? Um, what record do you want that you don't have? I'd love to hear. I'd love to engage with uh, with all the people watching. If you want to check me out on social media, uh, I'm on Instagram, Twitter. I've got a podcast. I've got two podcasts. I do film photography that's on Instagram. You can check out the other videos on my channel. They've been a lot more music-based lately than my old wrestling edits 
but uh, I'm glad to be transitioning into something new. It feels good to, uh, to have a new passion and a new hobby. So thank you very much for watching. That's about all I've got for today.